All right. Thank you very much for uh, taking this time today to learn about different uh, effective ways to teach animal science using animal science models. And so I'm going to walk through some different um, ideas for you today, some things to, for you to think about, but also show you some of our models that uh, can be very engaging and enticing for your students to get that hands-on learning. So to start out, uh, just to remind everyone of our learning objectives, first we're going to focus on um, how to use models to create an effective learning environment. Then we're going to go into some best practices for engaging students in animal science lessons, and then we'll review some of our top selling models and curricula uh, from RallyWorks. So uh, just want to say thank you for taking our time, your, your time to meet with us. We have a wide variety of different educational training tools uh, throughout career and technical education. We're going to be focusing in our, edu our agricultural world, uh, but really if there are uh, other areas that you may teach or if you're generalizing in, um, there's a lot of different places that we think that we can help in uh, the world that you're in. So I want to start with the importance of hands-on training. In agriculture, we're seeing the, the push. More and more students are, are in that world where they're um, looking to be a part of the uh, one of the largest employees in the world, and that's agriculture. And how can we help them to get an understanding? Um, I see every day as um, I talk to teachers and I work with teachers or um, I uh, am in the classroom, uh, about how when students learn and get their hands on things and see what's available to them, that changes their, their scope and their identity of what is out there that they may want to be a part of in the future. Now, there are a lot of challenges in agriculture. <clears throat> Less students are coming from the farm. The farm has changed. We have uh, much larger size farms. We have very small farms. Um, and a lot of that, you know, what once was the family farm has, has changed. And we have to change with that as well. There's also fewer options um, going out to the agricultural world. A lot of that has to do with some things like biosecurity, with uh, the ability to actually have your students be trained well enough to be able to interact with uh, animals that are on a working farm or in a uh, industry. There's also more need to bring that learning into the classroom because you can't always go out and do it. And so that's one of the things that we really are looking for and striving for is to do that, is to bring learning into the classroom, bringing these models in where students can see it, learn, interact in a safe environment, in an understanding environment um, in that world. And then also we look for career opportunities and uh, ways to look at um, how to help your students understand that there's going to be a lot of different opportunities out there. And what are those opportunities? When they don't know what's out there, it's hard for them to say, I want to be this or I want to be that. We want to help in those, those areas. So we have a formula that we like to use um, that really kind of brings about engagement and skill development. So it starts with just that skill development. It goes into skill refinement, skill performance, and skill sharing. So kind of to break it down for you, we really are all about that students getting into doing that development, understand tangible ways to get that uh, understanding and learning. Once you get past that, then it starts to work and focus more on skill refinement. Once they kind of have that overarching understanding, and we're going to use our models here in just a few minutes of what that looks like, then we have to start asking more refined questions, actually looking in deeper, having students take risk, look at them to say, okay, you know the big picture. Now let's start um, seeing how different systems work one with another. How do they interact together? And then we're going to go into skill performance. Are we able to evaluate, look at students' performance, and are they doing things the way they're supposed to be, the way that um, it's been taught and trained for them? And then finally, we want students to be able to share their skills, to connect with others, to be able to show the relevance, and, and by doing that, to see why are these things important in their world. So some engagement examples that we use is we're going to talk and we're going to use, and I have here in the classroom with us here, is our cow model. We have other tools to engage as well. Um, we have uh, different um, reproductive models. And so there's the cow uterus model that we'll talk about a little bit here. We have the um, animal anatomical models that we're going to be looking at with uh, uh, skill performance. And then we also do things like scenario cards and other types of ways to engage your students while using some of the, uh, um, the uh, models. So 
In this case, it's all about learning with hands-on tools. So in this case, we have our cow model here. The cow model pulls apart. <laughs> when you pull it apart, it has uh, 13 different uh, organs and parts to the animal that students can actually touch and feel and get to learn about. This gives hands-on learning so they can understand what the different parts are. When you're talking about the uh, uh, ruminant system, what does it look like? How and where does it is it placed in the animal? How big is it compared to the rest of the animal? Um, some of those uh, parts and pieces are there for you. And that allows that skill development, getting an understanding of that uh, learning objectives that you have. Then we like to <laughs> ding it a little bit more. In this case, we have skill refinement. What we're talking about here is, and we're using our um, reproductive model, for example, is now we're gonna focus just on one area. So you may know where the reproductive system is and located in the animal, but now we're gonna dig in deeper and say, okay, can you see, can you understand all the different parts of the reproductive system? Can you understand why and how um, breeding is so important? Why artificial insemination versus just traditional breeding? What's the differences? How is that important? Why would you use one over the other? So skill refinement, getting that understanding and that skill mastery, digging a little bit deeper. Then we talk about skill performance, thinking critically to gain an edge over uh, competition and being able to look in here and say, okay, not only do you understand the cow, but how is the cow different than the pig? How is the horse and the cow different? Is the goat and the, the cow, what areas do the goat and the um, cow have in common? What kind of reproductive systems or, or uh, digestive systems um, do they have? Are there similarities? Are there differences? Why is it that um, when we talk in uh, human form as sometimes ways to um, change, uh, someone has a heart attack, why would you use a, a pig valve for that? What are some differences? And so all of a sudden we start to look into and get into that. Okay, what are the differences? Not just, hey, I know cow, but do I know the different systems? Do I know the other things that are involved that I might need to be inter interacting with at some point? So again, that performance, allowing them to not just know one area, but multiple areas that they're working with. And then <laughs> skill sharing, helping students to effectively communicate and interact with um, a, a, both a competency and an ability level. In this case, we have a lot of different scenario cards, allowing students to then hone in in the sense of um, uh, agriculture career uh, scenarios. What are the different careers that you could get using and un having this knowledge about um, anatomical, uh, the, the anatomy of animals, the different parts and pieces of the, um, the um, careers that are out there? What can you do and how do you share that information? The share that you know and understand and you have the ability to be in that world and, and go down different career paths. So <clears throat> let's talk about some innovative learning tools that we have here at RealityWorks for your classroom. We're gonna talk about our animal science models. <clears throat> These models all have removable organs. The internal external anatomy of the animal is um, both there, so the, the texture and the feel, as well as an overarching uh, ratio to be able to show, even though these are um, desktop models, it is ratio uh, correct in the sense of um, how big the reproductive system is, how big the digestive system and nervous systems are, where are those located. We also have curriculum with every single one of our models. And we have a quick start guide helping students with different types of terminology and also assembly instructions. So one of the things that I would suggest as we walk through and kind of talk about and show just the different products we have before we get into is we've named all of our animals. This is an important piece to help with your, your students too. Give them ownership. Let them be able to na name their different animals. Let them be able to see not only what they are, but then how to interact with those animals as well. So that ownership um, can help give students an understanding and be able to see. Also, if you um, have multiple of these different uh, models, you can look at what are the things that are unique to each one? How are they similar? What, what on one animal might be similar to another or totally opposite? And what does that mean? You can then start working into different things if you're talking digestive system, what would one might eat versus another? What kind of food management are you looking at for different animals? All by just being able to work and interact with these different uh, animals here and see what those are. So we also have um, uh, 
are what we call small animals as well. So that kind of starts with our chicken model, being able to have a smaller uh, model of uh, um, that, again, is a full size. In this case, the chicken's a full size, where um, the other ones were reduced size. But in this case, our chicken model. Now, our dog model is a smaller version. Um, and But our cat model, again, then goes to the normal size or, or a um, lifelike size, I guess I should say. We have a rabbit model, um, as some will be working with uh, that world, and then also a fish model for some of our natural resource classes. Now, we also drill down even deeper, and this is where we get into more reproductive systems, where if you want to focus specifically on a certain area, we also have individualized um, reproductive systems. So you can go and talk and focus just on them. The nice thing about these is that these are all life-size models. So when you get the reproductive system, it is a life size, the average size of a cow's uh, uterus. The, um, and so as you're looking at that, students can see what that average size would look like in real life. We then have digestive system models for you to be able to use to focus just on those areas. Kidney models. And then we also have hoof and udder models as well. Again, one of the nice things is, in this case, I have our horse hoof model here. And what you can see is, as I show this horse hoof model, and excuse me for a second there, sorry about that. As I show you this horse hoof model, the one side of it has the actual look of the outside of the horse hoof. You flip it over and it's the inside. Again, this is on a peg, so it can be sitting here or you can pull it off so your students can have a good understanding and look at it. And then each part of this is magnetized so that I can pull apart and remove the different bones and be able to see how they work together. And again, we also have curriculum that goes right with um, this. So you can actually see and work with your students and talk through different parts. So we have very unique and, and very interesting um, individual uh, parts of this, but we also then um, as a whole, and then we also break it down into individual parts. Now, we also have skeleton models that you can use and also a dissected fetal pig. The great piece about our dissected fetal pig is a lot of times it's something where you can use this without having to dissect a fetal pig every single time for your students. Let them do the dissecting. You have a model that you can use over and over again. <clears throat> again, all of our products come with curriculum and that's where we're gonna to start to really engage and work with um, some of this. So in this case, let's start getting into some best practices and some ideas that we have to help you. This is where it starts to kind of get fun. Now, with our curriculum, we have a lot of different worksheets, diagrams, note sheets, um, PowerPoint slides, uh, and really kind of focus in a lot of different areas um, of whatever the, the, the uh, model you're working with. Now, I want to talk about ways to effectively teach animal science now. So, again, the big thing that I would have to say, and all of our products have, is systems to research and also engage. So look at the different areas of um, animal systems. In this case, you can go through and talk about every single part of that. In our cow here, all right, we have the reproductive system. It is on a magnetic form. I can take that piece off and I can talk through and I can talk about where um, the, uh, the uh, rectum is in location to, and this is a female cow, in relationship to um, how you move in to find the cervix, where the cervix and where the reproductive organs and the ovaries are. On the outside here, then you can actually follow the oviduct down and find where the ovaries would be. So you can walk through all those systems with your students. Now, again, this is a great demonstration piece for you to use in a classroom. But other ways to encourage interaction are we have worksheets that allow students to engage and interact with each one of these different systems. Another great example would be games and competitions. We like to uh, look a lot of times when we work with different schools and, and sometimes we'll have a, a Friday competition. Uh, it's a great time to be able to look for competition opportunities. And in this case, you can take all the parts and pieces out of the animal, put them all down, have them have to both one, either, and it can be written down, but write down what the different uh, parts are, 
or it could be something where they have to say what the part is and then put it back in the right place. It's a great competition to get students to understand. And that's one thing that we've heard a lot and, and talked to teachers a lot is where are the different organs? Where are the different systems on the animal? To be able to understand that if I move the kidney here, all right, how large is the uh, digestive system and the rumen, the ruminant in this case here, where is it in location to the rest of the animal? What would you, uh, what importance does it play? How large it is compared to the rest of the animal? Being able to go into and look at games and competition that sense. We also look at research projects. Um, can you have students use this as a piece of the re research project? We have students who take pictures of our models and put that and, and um, use different graphics and different design elements to show in their research projects what they're talking about. One of the great pieces of this model is the rivet system, where it actually comes apart. So it comes into three different pieces. And inside here, when you talk about the honeycomb-like textures, we actually have that texture there for you. When you talk about where it goes, you could actually um, find and, and walk through the different areas that it actually is going to go in inside the ruminant system. So all of these different pieces are pieces of the puzzle to get, help students to learn and to um, gain understanding of how it all works and, and interacts together. A rotational system study is another great example and a way to, to use this. Have If you have different animals, if you're looking at systems across the board, it might be good for you to have the pig, the horse, the cow, the, the goat, and have them sitting in different areas of your classroom. Have it on a rotational. Have them go from one animal to the next, seeing what is different, what is the same. There's also a lot of um, opportunities with a curriculum, almost using it as a how does it work activity putting different pieces of the um, animal on the table and saying, okay, what is this piece? What is this system? <laughs> Excuse me, and how does it work? Another great opportunity is for students to create their own presentations instead of, um, and, and how-to videos. Instead of you doing the teaching, let the students actually make presentations, make videos using the models, telling about what the different parts and pieces are. And then my favorite is the Instruct the Instructor Day. This is the kind of day where instead of you teaching the students, you now flip the classroom, you have the students teach to you. Now, let's talk about some examples of this interaction. I have some examples here. I have post-it notes. A lot of times, this is a great place where if I want to, I can have the students, I have post-it notes, and I have them come and put where the reproductive system is. Kidney back up. Where is the kidney? So having them be able to actually um, put on here the post-it notes of where things are, where things are located. Now, another great example, so post-it note is a great thing. Another one is our painter's tape. Now, these models here, the reason why we say painter's tape is because by using paint, there's nothing that's going to uh, chip off, that's not going to um, uh, tip. Uh, take off any of the, the paint here, but it's something where with painter's tape, what I can do then is I could actually take this painter's tape and I have the students follow the digestive tract. So I can actually have them come up here and put the painter's tape into a location. I got to tear a little bit of it, but actually having them put it over the digestive tract. And then once I have it in place here, this is something where I can actually write on. I can draw, bringing it down here and where it is actually going to go, allowing students to be able to then write on and also show and have them have a good understanding of, okay, what is part of that? Where does that go? Now, in this case, you have the trachea, you have the esophagus, making sure, okay, am I going in the trachea? Am I going in the esophagus? Where do I need to actually be focusing in that world as I go down into the body? Another opportunity here, again, is with this, you can put different words on here. And so you can use painter's tape as well to show what the different parts and pieces are. Allowing students to be able to see that. <coughs> I'm uh, focusing on the inside, but you can do that for the outside. The picture in the, in the PowerPoint here shows um, being able to do it for the skeletal system, for the muscular system, for 
um, different parts of the body. We have the ability here to be able to show some of those things. Now, we also talk about printed sheets, and I have those as well. Our curriculum has great visuals, printed sheets here, that you can give to the students and say, follow, <laughs> trace through, have them go through what the system of the animal is here. Have them be able to go through that. We have our horse model here, and it's all of the uh, different outside parts of the animal, the anatomy of the, the exterior anatomy. And so students can actually take the backside of the animal, now this is the, the cow, but with the horse, and actually put those painter tape pieces, post-it notes, um, uh, little pieces of um, cut out uh, printed paper, and be able to put on here and plaster the model with all the different pieces and parts. Another example for our pig model is being able to understand the different um, areas <laughs> Maybe it is the uh, primal cuts, maybe it's more than just a primal cuts, but be able to put on here the different parts of the animal here and actually showing um, some of those pieces. So they can actually go on and where would the uh, leg or the hand be? Where would the jowl be? Allowing them to not only just look at it, but also working to be able to physically feel, touch, see, and do with those different places. Now, another way to encourage interaction here is through um, a QR code system. And so what I have done is I was able to go out online, and there's a lot of different places, but this place was QR code generator, and I created a QR code. Easy enough to create. I uh, put it up on the screen here so you can see, but it is the cow ruminant system. And so in this case here, what I can do is I left it on this sheet of paper so you could see it a little better, is I could put the cow ruminant system um, right here, take my phone, go over to it, find the actual uh, um, QR code, there it goes, and then it pops up for me. Now, in this case, it tells me, and in this case, what I did was I put a few uh, um, lines of information on my QR code. So in this case, it talks about how the, the cow model shows a great view of the ruminant system. The omasum, the abomasum, the, um, let me find here, the reticulum and the, um, uh, rumen. It talks, so I just put a, a quick little piece of information there. Now, what it also does is you can also put different websites. And so what I did was I also included and I shared this website. So it was from the University of Minnesota, all on this QR code. All I had to do was go up and create a QR code. It gave me that ability <coughs> to then jump on and show when I'm talking about the ruminant digestive system, Here's a great site that talks through what that is. Again, uh, a very simple, this took me um, two minutes to create and then have add a website to it. And so this is something where you could actually then tape it on, keep it on, or have it for different parts and pieces of your training. But it shares the different websites or different opportunities that you can use to help your students, different research opportunities, telling them and being able to do that. Another great example of this is instead of you doing it, make your students, they're probably a lot more savvy than we are in some of this, and let them create QR codes and then show it to you. Have you then view it and see what they have. Have students um, uh, view each other's and, and look at each other's and see whose is better, who has the best, do some competition, some uh, judging in that to see what's, what's the best site that they use or the coolest different interactive pieces. Let the students go and use some of that all while doing this. They're learning about different model, different systems in this case. Now, all of this then helps within different pathways that we have. We have pathway packages that include all of the different models if you're interested in it. But it is also something where what this really allows is for you to help your students be able to gain an understanding in the classroom and have a hands-on learning opportunity with your students. So with that, 
I say thank you very much for taking this time. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, if you want to look at any of our products, you can go to realityworks.com and be able to see not only our products, but for most every single animal we have, we have a sample lesson, a uh, classroom lesson that you can look at and see for yourself as well. So take the time, do a little research, look at that, but hopefully this has helped you to be able to see and give you an a, a idea of all the different products that uh, are available in the animal model world that could help your students engage and help you engage as well. All right, not seeing any uh, questions. Thank you for your time. And please feel free to reach out to RealityWorks anytime you have um, uh, more questions or anything we can do to help you. Thank you for your day.